I made every play in the world awful at football. Even Erden Haaland looks this bad, and I don't think you'll believe me if I told you this was his career trajectory. Mbappe looks pants as well, and his career was even worse. And that's because I changed every player in the world to 100 countability out of 200, but also I changed all of their potentials to 200. And I mean everyone, even players with who are naturally bad or you've never heard of, they all have 200 potential ability. And I have nine leagues loaded, including the Championship in England, the Scottish Cinch Premiership, the Eredivisie in the Netherlands, and the Portuguese Top Flight too. So let's simulate and see which clubs take advantage of this level playing field. Annoyingly, after a couple of months, Man City are actually top. They're the same points as Fulham, but what I am noticing is that they're using quite a lot of like youngsters that you would never see in the first team of Manchester City. Obviously, because they all have the same attributes, uh, they're obviously starting to develop a little bit quicker than what their usual players would. It is strange though, because in some leagues, we are seeing it definitely playing a bit of an impact here. We've got Real Madrid in third place, Barcelona down in seventh in Spain, in France, Montpellier are top, and PSG are down in 11th place with only 13 points from nine games, already losing four. In the Serie A, Roma and Lecce are at the top of the table. BVB, Dortmund and Bayern Munich, they're first and second, which you kind of expect. The same as Portugal, they've got three of the top four clubs up there. Benfica are struggling massively, which did surprise me. I thought they'd be the opposite, considering they've got quite a lot of youngsters already with very good facilities. I thought maybe Benfica would actually dominate that. I thought wrong. Udivisi has Sparta Rotterdam just ahead of Ajax by seven points there, so that's not bad. And Hibernian are leaning are leading in Scotland uh, over Celtic, and Rangers are actually down in ninth place. That's going to be dangerous for them being relegated. What you're watching right now is the goals from the 2022 Qatar World Cup final between Saudi Arabia and Canada. Yeah, I know. How the hell did that happen? Uh, no idea. Uh, but as you can see, all of the players are still exactly how we'd expect. They have grown up to 105 out of their, you know, 100 that they were previously. But somehow, Saudi Arabia actually went and won the World Cup final, which is phenomenal. They beat Canada in the final, as we've just seen. Third place was Mexico, who beat Spain 2-0 in the semi-final. It was Saudi Arabia who actually knocked out Spain. Quarter final, Ecuador, Brazil, United States, and Serbia were the teams that departed. So Saudi Arabia actually knocked out the United States on penalties. So they actually had quite a, a very tricky run because they also beat Australia in extra time. Uh, we can see some of the clubs that you would expect to be in there, like France, for instance, nowhere to be seen. The group stages are quite hilarious because a lot of the teams, England and Wales eliminated, Poland and Argentina, Lionel Messi's Argentina was eliminated uh, bottom of the group considering they went on and actually won the thing in real life. France who finished bottom there. It's very bizarre how this has occurred. Because in the league in January, things are starting to kind of even out uh, as you would expect. I mean, Newcastle have actually took the top of the table uh, to Man City there. Atletico Madrid are top in Spain. Nice are actually top in France and PSG are starting to claw back. They're only four points behind there. Porto and Benfica are in the top three there. Santa Clara are just doing really well to hold on. Bayern Munich, Yep, they're up there. They'll probably stay there from now on. It is looking great in Syria, by the way. Iridivisi, exactly the same. A couple of teams that you'd never expect to be up there. Hibs are still pushing off Celtic from that top position. So we are still seeing things are kind of as we'd expect it and key players for different clubs now are players who are more, mainly youngsters who have good potential anyway uh, and are able to progress and we're also seeing like jobs coming up available which is quite interesting the managers here we got the Liverpool job come up because they're they're sat in 15th position there I mean the, it's weird how like the relegation still has relegation candidates like Leicester for instance and occasionally you see Crystal Palace go down and the top of the table kind of has the same, but I guess that's down to the scat, the staff and who's managing the club. So let's fast forward to the end of the season. Manchester City are champions of the Premier League only with 70 points, which I think is obviously a lot lower than what you'd expect. Uh, we have Oscar Bob as their 
current key player, Pep Guardiola, is still there. But Kevin De Bruyne, he looks nowhere near as good. And he's actually transfer listed, which is quite hilarious because he only played 11 games. We started 11 games with 14 off the bench. So we are seeing, obviously, the, the hindrance of being a little bit older is not going to help your cause. Neil Mopai was the top scorer of the league. But in the other divisions, Real Madrid were champions of Spain. PSG clawed it back in France. Their Roma won their first Serie A in a while. Yeah, the Bundesliga, I know. Even with this, they are still managing to win. Porto have managed to flump it, and Benfica came out of nowhere and won the league in Portugal. Love to see it. In the Eredivisie, PSV won the league by a point above Ajax and Sparta Rotterdam did so well they're finishing in third place. Unfortunately for them, they could not hold on. Aberdeen are the first club in Scotland to win outside of Celtic and Rangers since Aberdeen in the 80s, which is a lovely uh, thing considering obviously Hibs were up there for a while. And joining the Premier League is Sheffield United, Middlesbrough and West Brom. The Champions League was won by PSG as well, who beat Ajax in the final. But the two goal scorers who are playing, I do not recognise from their youth academy. Mbappe didn't even play or wasn't even on the bench. The most expensive transfer in the summer window was Rafael Toloi, who moved from Atalanta to Shakhtar for about £3.6 million. That's the most expensive transfer. If you do go into the January window, though, that's when teams start started to realize who was actually going to be better to meet their full potential and Kylian Sardella actually moved from Anderlet to Newcastle for about £43 million. Nicholas Sievald also to PSG for £26 million. So we've got a few players then who are a little bit more expensive but also some players I've never heard of. I mean this guy here moved from Lausen in Switzerland. He probably doesn't have uh, very good attributes in the game in real life anyway but at the start but because we've edited it £14.5 million and he's actually progressed quite nicely uh, and we take a look at his attributes he's up to 108 current ability nowhere near the 200 but there we go we might see some weird and wonderful things who is this club i've never heard of them but they sold a player to hoffenheim for 8.25 million pound and he's quite good as well. If I sort by current ability, we can see that some players have actually progressed to nearly 130 in just one year. So 30 attribute points. Uh, we've got this Luxembourg player here from Mönchengladbach. Uh, Mario Stroikens from Anderlecht. Arda Gerler, of course, quite a popular wonder kid this year. He looks phenomenal. Uh, obviously, only around about 18 years of age. So it is looking like the youngsters in the game who may already be wonder kids or just have really good personal attributes uh, to grow if they did have good potential are going to be the biggest benefactors from this experiment. The second season saw Wolves jump up into second place with the same points and goal difference as champions Chelsea. Erlen Haaland is starting to look very good already, up to 130 current ability after two years. Bigger shocks elsewhere as Sociedad won La Liga and Nice won the French League. Elsewhere, it looked rather normal though, other than Rangers finishing top and Celtic down in fifth place. The richest clubs in the world started to spend their money. £89 million pound here on Cade Colwell, the United States international, just 20 years of age moving to Bayern Munich. And then if you go into the January window, £52 million pound was spent on an Antwerp player to Manchester City. So money obviously is going to talk. Anthony of Manchester United even won the Ballon d'Or with a 6.89 average rating. That's awful. It's also done something for the world rankings, which I didn't think it would. Mexico are now ranked number one in the world. Canada are there in fourth place. The United States are in sixth. Even Saudi Arabia, after their glorious World Cup win, 13th in the world. The new best player in the world, down to 149 current ability, is Dario Sorio. He is a winger from Chile, just age 20 years old. We've got Odin, Thiago Holm, and Arda Gerla, who's also up there on 148. All of the good wonder kids and some that maybe you've never heard of are up there, probably because they've got great mental attributes. In the following year, things didn't really change much from what we already know, although well, Wolves did drop from second place down to 13th. In other leagues, it was pretty much very similar. The, the guys that you would expect to win did win. But the players are quite interesting because now if we take a look at the highest rated player, it is Arda Gerda, 166. He looks absolutely phenomenal. But we've got the likes of Jaden Nelson up here. Dario Rosario is there. Still at Seattle, but he has a bid coming in from Manchester City and Newcastle for like 7 million and he's absolutely incredible and we've got quite a lot of very recognisable wonder kids in and around the 160 mark. 
Man City spent £91 million on goalkeeper Matthew Cox from Brentford. And in the new year, in the January window, Bayern Munich spent £51 million on Felix Aurorier, who I've never heard of, from Germany. After five years, things are starting to look very different. Because Newcastle are your Premier League winners, but the season before was Wolves. Yes, they went from second all the way down to wherever they were to winning the league in 25-26. 72 points. Again, on the same points as Chelsea, but this time they had better goal difference. So things are, very, are looking very different compared to what we're used to. However, in other leagues, maybe not so much. Although Real Sociedad did win the 23-24 season, which was a bit of a shock, it's gone back to being Barcelona and Real Madrid ever since. Nice went on a three-year run with Monaco winning it just after that. Bundesliga, we finally had somebody who isn't Bayern Munich win in Munch and Gladbach won it the season before this. Bayern Munich have reclaimed their title back, however. In the Serie A, it's as you'd expect. In the Eredivisie, Ajax have been dominating since PSV's first season win. Benfica won four. Porto managed to get one in the last year. And in the Scottish Premiership, Celtic managed to come back and win a league title after Hibernian won one either side. The best player in the world currently is Paul Wanner on 190. 92 current ability. Arda Gerla is also up there, but for some reason he's chose to go to Spurs. We also have some players playing for Nice who are up there, which is obviously why they're winning it. And there's actually a player from Sturm Graz uh, in Austria who is one of the biggest uh, current ability players in the game. He is under a bid to currently go to Brentford because he will be leaving on a free transfer after. He's done very well getting 185 current ability while being in Austria, so expect to see him move to a big European club. <laughs> Annoyingly, the next World Cup was won by Germany, so after Saudi Arabia's heroics in 2022, we've gone back to uh, nations that we would usually see win the World Cup. They're currently sat in fifth place in the world rankings. Brazil are top, Mexico are still holding on, and to be fair, Saudi Arabia are still in 12th. And by the way, Newcastle won the Premier League with Sean Dyche as their manager, which I absolutely love, with Jude Bellingham in midfield, and yes, they're playing a 4-4-2. Five years later though, and things are getting a little bit stale now. We're starting to see Manchester City and Chelsea win leagues, and Real Madrid and Barcelona doing also the same in Spain. Really, the only thing that I was quite surprised with was the championship just had Wolves as champions, which means they actually went down after winning the league less than five years ago, which was quite impressive. And in the Scottish Premiership, it's been dominated by Hibernian, who's won like six or seven in a row now, which is also very impressive. Ballon d'Or winner is the first one that I have never heard of in Steven Schupendi from Albania. He currently plays at Barcelona and my word is he absolutely insane. What is quite funny about it is he come from the San Marino Academy which we all know uh, is quite hilarious really considering San Marino's stance in football. Uh, he was actually playing at Cesena in Italy before a £1.8 million move and look how good he has been doing. Like insane amount of goals. He basically this year's version of Lionel Messi in the game. Obviously not quite as good as Messi's prime, but that is rather impressive. In the player department, we are starting to see quite a lot of 200 out of 200 current abilities too, with the likes of Jude Bellingham. And there are, there are a lot of different nations here. We've got Chileans, Ukrainians, French, Czechs, Americans, Danish, Israelis, Croatians, Austrians, loads of different players who are in that 200 out of 200 category and loads who are also there or thereabouts which is obviously fantastic and it makes for quite an exciting time in regards to the transfers like here where manchester city spent 225 million pound on a finnish player I know, right? Speaking of Manchester City, I thought it'd be quite interesting to see where some of these players are at because Erling Haaland is currently applying his trade at Guimaraes in Portugal. He has moved around a little bit as well. He moved from Manchester City back to Mould on a free transfer. I know, with a £5.25 million move after that, uh, he isn't quite at 200. He's only at 148. And Kylian Mbappe is playing for Vancouver Whitecaps. And he's also been around the block a little bit too. He moved to Poland at one point to Crystal Palace. He was out on loan at Everton earlier on. Moved to Blackburn on a free transfer to Maccabee Tel Aviv. And he's just moved to Vancouver on a free transfer. This guy's career went absolutely the different way compared to where it should have gone. And I love this chaos. 
Another five years later, Manchester City are back on top of the Premier League. It's kind of been like that with the other top leagues in Europe as well, with the Bundesliga being won by Bayern Munich. Spain is being dominated again by Barcelona and Real Madrid. Even in France, PSG have started to dominate again, winning the last three. Italy, Napoli and Juventus have traded titles for a long time, although Sassuolo did have one league title there, which is quite impressive. Now they're down in 17th place. In Portugal, however, in the very recent times, we have Famalicão, who have just won the league ahead of Benfica, who have won it for a very long time. And the Eredivisie has just been won by Feyenoord. In Scotland, however, Rangers have just won a league title, their second in three years, with Hibernian, who's kind of dominated ever since. But Celtic are down in sixth place and they never really recovered. The Champions League did see multiple different winners. It's just not exactly as unique as what I hoped, with Borussia Mönchengladbach and Wolfsburg being really the only two surprise packages in there that you wouldn't really see. It. Wolfsburg actually won it twice in 2030 and 2033. They did pretty well. They also actually won the Bundesliga at 1.2 in 2033, while Gladbach actually had a bit of a spell of dominance there with three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back instead of Bayern Munich always winning. The Ballon d'Or, however, has seen Elias Akamak dominate. He won five in a row, four in a row there. He won another in 2030 and 2027, meaning he won six in total. Absolutely rinsed the Ballon d'Or in this experiment. Has played really well for Barcelona, who of course have been doing really well, not just in Europe, but also in Spain. And that's where we end this experiment. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to watch another one just like this, I also put together reputation versus facilities in the non-league and seen which one took the non-league club the furthest.